Hi everyone, this is another session where uh, my friend, my brother Ken and I here, you know, continue our discussions around uh, building a, a true uh, a local events with an exposed endpoint that allows you to stand up your entire stack, your entire tech stack locally on your machine and be able to deploy it without changing anything. So this is a concept that's called cloud foreign. And what that concept basically means, it means that, you know, you should be able to run your entire system in airplane mode without having to kind of subscribe to any cloud system of any kind. Um, so uh, last time, you know, Ken and I kind of got to this amazing conclusion that, okay, we, we figured out that last missing piece, which is basically to use Wiremark to uh, basically... Uh, by the way, the you know you know Ken uh, Stefan he reached out to me. He said you didn't have to use callback. I said, then what do you mean? Hmm. Let me show you here what he what he said. And then uh, right. <laughs> he said, uh, let's see here. It's something to the effect of, you know, hey, thanks, you know, for the shout out and all that. I said, yeah, of course, you're a, you're a genius, you know. So I'd I'd love to talk to you and all that. And then one of the things that he said. Let's see here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, he said, um, if you just want to use a function, tie the return, tie to a return body, you can use this with body. So if you say with body, uh, you can just tie. So so first of all, let's see what he's, he said. <laughs> he said only use this with callback if you want to do something external. But if you already have the function, in your system, you don't really yeah. have to do any of that. I was like, you oh, well, response body and with body tag. Okay. Yeah. Right. Body method. Okay. Huh. So, so let's see if that's true, okay. right? So, where were we? <laughs> uh, I, was I testing it on Git file? Let's see. Git file. Calc. Oh, I was testing it on Git file, wasn't I? Let's see. Or did I do it on no triple S? See that that was a bad idea because we shouldn't be like <laughs> Git file is an active project, you know. Uh, that getting. So let's see. I hope I didn't revert. And if and if I did, that's okay. We we know exactly where to put that last. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's fine. Let's see here. Remote. Where where was repository list and contribution? Effort Q. There's it. There it is. PUC like you. And PUC listen to events. So let's see here. So if I pick up this one. Let's see here. I think that's where I put the. You, you can see my screen okay, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so it's not this one. I think it was. And did I kind of override with? Yeah, so this is the Lake U client. And then basically I took this client and what did I do with it? Attribution Q, do something. Create publish endpoint. Yeah, that that's what it is. So this is this was just an example. Okay, let's go let's go to Lake U real quick and see and see if we can incorporate that because that's really that really is just the last piece. And then ideally can like this is great to start this, but I want to modularize this a little bit further and I'll explain to you in a second. Yeah, but we we need to kinda there's there's a there's a certain energy that comes with doing a demo right? <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but here's here's my work here's what i think it's doing <laughs> so let's do this there's like you there it is so this was supposed to be what we call an api uh broker mm -hmm. right and i made it intentionally as a web page for that particular purpose but instead of doing that yeah, so this is the API that's exposed. Okay, 
create publisher okay. yeah okay yeah so instead of doing that let me take away all this this all goes out these changes that i have here yeah that's that's all nonsense i don't need to do any of that actually And then I can go back. So check this out. There's this Lake U web. Mm -hmm. And then there's Lake U, the, the actual library. And this library has a bunch of things that it's doing, right? So now I actually don't need this entirety of Lake U web at all. Because now I have this, this API broker here. This guy can be exactly what I want in terms of that's what uh, spin up the the mock server and things like that, right? And exactly. give me your response inside the, the package of the library. Okay. Okay. Exactly. And then I think this Q broker here is what? Yeah, that's the actual Azure Q broker, which I'm gonna talk to you about. I need to split that off into um something completely different because we mm. I want this to be modular. So there is a core component. And then you can attach Azure, AWS, Google, whatever you want to attach in there. Okay. It's up to you, right? So, okay. so it's kind of like if you were to have a base model that you should, you would expect that anything needs to, to be run on, running on like you needs these certain properties. Yeah. And then you can have some kind of decorator, right? That you could say, um, you know, pass in whatever values you want to in this sort of anonymous function, like in, in an extension method, right? And then they can massage the model they want or change the certain model and kind of pick that yep. right like you're, you're just saying like basically have it generic and then they wrap it with whatever external source they're going to tap into okay yep precisely okay. right so so you know how in the entity framework that we say that use sql yeah, well, yeah. I, I i wanted to say yeah. like use azure use aws yeah, it doesn't okay. matter what yeah. the provider is okay so here's the deal this api server broker now we're just going to actually because everything else is all said and done. Like literally all the other pieces are already in place. Mm -hmm. We just need, like we have an orchestration service in here that basically goes and says, hey, publish event, subscribe event handler, or run subscription server. Okay. Right, so that's what this thing is doing underneath, under the hood. Okay, so- A quick question though too. So in the testing aspect, um, when we're doing their testing, if they're gonna be calling, uh, publish event to see if things are working right in their functional test right okay yeah. yeah right so let's see here we might be we might need to implement some sort of a client you know but then again you have the publish event right here so you don't mm -hmm. actually need to do that i wonder if we can allow it to do to publish to an event that is or a server that's already running instead of starting a new one that will be interesting oh, right? okay. so so okay. when you publish here so what did i do here so i basically went here and said if it's service bus of course we need to get rid of this but if it's service bus then you're doing external event if it's not then you're doing local events this is how it it looks at your url and it basically makes a determination oh nice okay okay but but of course i want to do this a lot a lot more differently but this is a good start uh now um Let's go into the API API server broker. Let's install Wiremock in here. There's Wiremock. He even has like Wiremock X. You know, he he look at all these. Yeah, there's a ton in there. Yeah, I'm seeing that. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did all of this. Yeah, he's yeah. he's good. Stuff is good. Okay. Let's go. This is this. Done and done. Great. Installed. Perfect. I love it. And now let's go here and initialize this wire mock guy. So uh, private read only uh, wire mock server. Okay. So there's our wire mock server. And then this connection string here is literally is either going to be your uh, service bus, but in this case here, it'll be just the this dot wire mock server equal new wire mock server. It was like wire mock server. 
Not create server or start or something. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Start. Start with admin interface. What was that? Did you see that? What is that? Hold it on. It said start with admin interface. I was like, wait a minute. Oh my god, he made a UI for it. What? He made a UI for it. Oh man, I gotta go research this thing. Yeah, again. yeah. This guy, this guy, this guy. Now, I don't know, man. I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh man. Okay. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Fully like, loaded. Fully loaded. Yeah, that, yeah, he he put everything in there, didn't he? So, okay, where is the URL part though? Oh, yeah, URLs, there it is. So, by the way, he's allowing multiple URLs. I don't know for whatever reason. Like, if you want to spin up a bunch of, I'm pretty sure he has his reasons. I don't know what they are, but I'm pretty sure he has. Oh, maybe if he's testing like load balancing, he wants to hit. Okay. okay. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay. And also, I know that um, you know, when you're starting up. If you're on your startup projects in .NET, you'll know that we have that sort of endpoint with SSSL. I mean SSL, and then we have none, right? And so, yeah. like, you have access to both yeah. um, paths. So maybe even that, you know, giving you access. Well, I don't know when you would use that use case, but yeah. <laughs> right. usually you got you know one or the other. But right. So let's see here. So this is this. Okay. So this dot wire mock server dot. Uh, 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 with, I think it was with something. Uh, let's see here. Uh, look at the, let me pull the docs up. Let's yeah. See. Oh, he also gives you the option to create a client. The dude did everything, basically. Yeah. Seriously. Um, let's see. So there is, I can, I can go back. This is, this is syntax. I don't know for whatever reason, it it's not. Uh, I always try to remember it, but uh, it kind of slips. Do you still off. have it in that project? Because um, I know you took the interface uh, methods away, but did you add still have it in that web project that we did last time? I think you spun it up. Um, yeah, yeah. What was that web project though? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> oh, it was. Oh, it wasn't in the. Oh, that wasn't late. Yeah, that's somewhere. Yeah, that's that's the thing. But but oh, that's okay. That like. Somewhere. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, but but that's okay because I have the, I have the the idea here. Okay, so our mock server, you say start great, and then you know we basically want to say, uh, given. Yeah, that's right. So given, given, and then you basically say create request. We need request dot create. Okay. Great. Quest dot create, okay. and then inside yeah. that we basically go and say so with path. So that path is gonna be the event name. You're creating dynamically on the fly, right? Mm -hmm. And then we want to say using post. That's done, and then in here we be, we basically want to go and say respond with. Yeah. Response.create. Here we go. And then in here, I want to go and say uh, 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 with body. So that's what he was talking about. He basically oh, said, okay. Okay. he's like, dude, why don't you just use with body for this? With body. I saw with body as JSON show up there too. Yep. The autocomplete. Yep. So, so what does that mean? It means that. I'm just trying to understand what he meant by that because with body takes in just a byte array or at least one of its uh let's see what does he take byte array body string oh there's a funk there you go so this can be literally just a request message like this hmm. that's your request message okay Oh, so you can actually do some logic to determine what type of output you're going to have based on the request coming in, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to actually map a bunch of routes and expected paths nope. and parameters. Nice. Okay. This okay. is the, well, he calls it body factory, but okay. So he's getting two things. He's getting a string. I think that's what he's doing here. See if that at least makes sense. Hmm. Okay, so this is okay, string. Yeah. So um 
There we go. And it, it also has there the asynchronous go. part, which is great. So if he's if he's doing a funk like this, that basically means his input is a request message. And oh, so we don't need this output here, basically. But he's expecting a string of some kind. That's for sure. Right. So he's expecting us to return something in here. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. And the string is basically the response that's coming back from after, like after we run this, you're not, you're supposed to respond because it's a real API endpoint mm -hmm. that you're running, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so, um, okay. Okay. okay, so this will mean that this event handler can call this event handler. We can actually await it, it's event handler, and we could pass the request message dot body that's what we have from yes from last night last time right so mm -hmm. now okay. i can, now i can go and say wait a second and after you shape the return right there yeah so okay. this is the request of t right and i basically want to say json converter and we're deserializing i think json serializer are you trying to use a system.txt or something yeah or yeah. or using newton saw which yeah whichever one you know, I, I think doing soft is better. He just hit two billion. Crazy dude. <sighs> two billion. Man. Like he literally broke nougat.org. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's a serializer. Um, but I noticed a lot I have to set some properties when it comes to like case matching and things like that that you want to kind of turn off. You have to kind of add a lot of properties to the serializer. Whereas Newton soft kind of out the gate. Yeah. Does a lot of that just stuff. Has it for you. Yep. Is this body a string? Yes, it is. Yay. Okay. This is perfect. So this is your request, and your request is doing a serialization, and here's the body. So now I can go here and say await event handler with the request. Ah. Nice. And then I can basically just go and say, because because it's just a, so I can just go request message.body. I'm done here. Yeah, yeah. So let's well, see. Actually, so I'm, actually, I'm going to the response because we're going to want to, because mm -hmm. the register event, mm -hmm. they're expecting an input on their end, right? So they're saying, hey, we're expecting this event to happen. And so I guess, yeah, I guess they're wanting to return that same body then, right? From yep. the, okay. When you post, you just get it back, right? It'll say 200 mm -hmm. and that's it, right? And I think we should say also with, uh, with header, uh, with that, look how deep. Yeah, that all oh, that came up for you already. <laughs> yeah, look how how good the library is. You know, HTTP status. Yeah, it's very flexible. Okay, like that. Done. And I take this away and just pull normal human being. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So that's registering the event, right? I don't know what test was. Oh, the the should I should register event? Yeah, so all the tests for this is in place. It's just this one missing piece, right? So okay, so what does that mean? It means I can get rid of this entire guy now, like this entire web web client gone forever, which is amazing, because I can also get rid of its tests just like that. Someone else already did the job, so I should be okay, right? And I think yeah. I tried. To um, let's see here. Uh, we don't, client that was we need, yeah, we don't need it anymore because we already have Wiremark, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that means that this guy can look like this. Ah, this fantastic. Let's see. Request for the status. All right. So. At this point, I think I'm trying to make sure I, I'm, I'm on the right track as far as the the part of the flow we're in because they're gonna they're gonna start that they run the server, but when it comes to register the, the event, are they going to want to say because you know, that's they say when a post happens to, um, I guess send back a response to them right like they want to get this a certain response to their server right, right. so at this point if they're so they're registering the the listener. Right, but it's kind of like, are they when that when they send their I guess when that listener I guess whenever that uh, entity pushes the value back in or creates that event, 
they're going to want to receive yeah. that event in a certain format, yeah. right? A certain, uh, okay, no, okay. Nope, doesn't matter. You just yeah. want to basically go and say, so So ideally in, in a cul-de-sac pattern, you're basically going and saying, you're basically going and saying, hey, uh, let's see, can I find an empty page here for God's sake? It's, it's too much, like way too much conversation. <laughs> Live design going on. Explaining things to people. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> So this is this is your event broker. Yeah. You're sitting here. Let's just say that you have a a couple of services sitting in here, and here's your orchestration service, right? Mm -hmm. So Levent or like you is, is sitting here, right? This is where you're doing the publishing and subscribing. But I want to test this. I want to test that when I push an event, it goes through the orchestration service, and the orchestration service will take it and persist it in some storage of some kind. Right, right, right. So you're just you're at this point where Lake Q is at. We're gonna signal from our test that Lake Q is pushing an event from external source that you that they're listening to, basically. Yep. Your acceptance okay. test will basically go and say, "This is literally how it is." Your acceptance test is sitting here and basically saying, "Levent in here, basically going and saying, hey, is this coming from a service bus queue, or is this coming from a local um, um, a phantom API?" Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. that's that's its power, right? It's basically going and saying, is this something that's coming from this guy or this guy? And it knows how to handle it because right. because of the configuration, right? So that means can let's see, what does that mean for us? That means that your acceptance test can push to the API directly. Right. So it's it's gonna uh what was that method we that you created i think it was this it was a sender or something i know you so you registered i know to, to kind of start get things spun up to say yep. wait for this but then I there was a method i think you used to send it right it was like a sender method you oh had, a publisher right? yeah 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 so so th that's the part i was kind of getting at with the publisher so the publisher now you probably actually we probably haven't even gotten to that point so i think that's where my question was going but um once you publish the event it's going to call that endpoint which should push push out a certain or that 200 basically mm -hmm. whatever the response is from that mm -hmm. okay. okay so inside this guy let's see here this guy will basically go and say kenny the it's okay this is acceptance yes mm -hmm. your acceptance this will basically go and hit this pretend like a q message came in Yep, yep. It will let this trickle through the system like this and persistent in the storage, and then it will go hit the controller in here and say, Did this message get persisted? Done. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. This is beyond amazing because now you can automate, you know, service bus queue integrations, you know, without having to worry about, you know, actually subscribing to an actual service bus. Service. Yeah. Yeah. You run it like you mentioned airplane mode. It's, it's literally you. airplane mode, cloud yeah, foreign mode. airplane mode. It's perfect. The, to the, to answer your question though, on Lake U, what's actually happening here is that if you go on to the, so this here is not needed anymore. And I hope to God that he's kind of attaching the events on the fly. That would make me super happy. But which means we're gonna just clean up some stuff, which is okay. But if you look at the event orchestration service. Here's literally what we're doing. When you're publishing an event, mm -hmm. right? You're either publishing event to event publishing service, which basically means go and post this to the API endpoint that we stood up in Wiremock. Right, right. So you see there's an API yeah, broker yeah. in here, and then there's an API server broker sitting in here. Okay, okay. Right? So now... My dear friend, let's see. Let me first rebuild this. Yeah, it should freak out because of the because oh, web of, project. Yeah, because they're on server. We don't need that actually. We don't need that anymore. And that was added after the fact. I wasn't super happy about it, but uh, <laughs> here we are. This is done too. Okay, where is where's there? Come on. See, I hate when it kind of spits out. I can't touch the library, but it doesn't show me the actual no, error. Yeah. I have to go look in the logs. It's dumb. 
Okay, so this is this is that. There is also let's see output here. I do a yeah, probably say do a rebuild or like a clean build or. Yep. Oh, there you go. There's there one. it is. I can I can find them. I just need to. Uh, yeah, this is all good because that run server went all the way up. I don't think we even need it. You know, we don't need it anymore. So this is event orchestration no. server. Let's take that guy out. Yeah, I should have just, I should have publish and subscribe, and that's it. And there's a server running that's taking all these. If 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 he's allowing me to build on the fly, I swear to God, this is gonna be, <laughs> dude, this is gonna be the thing. Oh, uh, let's see. This is this goes away. Nice. And now probably the unit test is gonna freak out a little. Because of course I had to test. Yeah, are we in the test? Yeah, we're in the test area. Okay, so this whole logic run, and that's the beauty. Like the whole file tells me which function it's testing. So if I get rid of the whole file, I'm good. I don't have to worry about. See, I I got rid of just the whole file basically, like go. in the test. Yeah. So okay, so there's that there run server. Don't need that anymore. Just like that. And then can I build? Can I build? By the, I'm going a little bit crazy here but yeah there you go then, then there's one more which is uh let's see output error oh yeah that's the manual test perfect so manual test now doesn't actually have it doesn't have any of that we actually don't need um api client or the yeah we don't need these anymore actually this whole manual test thing Let's see here. What do I want to do with it? I want to be able to go and say this is. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna say so. Then in your services part, where is the um, the original? Because uh, you have to spin up uh, wire wire mock, right? Like it's kind yeah. of centralized somewhere. Yeah. And right. then you start adding, you know, subscriptions to it, right? You're gonna start adding paths and things like that. Yeah. Where is the? Uh, okay, so you're. So where am I? What's new? So, okay. So the broker, the broker is kind of more that centralized place where it's spinning up. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, that's what my question was, what's holding the mm -hmm. original server. So that overall API server broker, mm -hmm. you're going to be always calling to that and it's going to keep yep. adding to that main. Gotcha. Yep. yep. Okay. It was the server broker. Sorry. I don't <laughs> make sure when we moved the API client, I was like, Oh wait, where was the original? It was behind the gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, no, we should be good. We should be good. Yeah. Um, damn. Okay, let's see. So this is all good. Let's rebuild. Make sure everything is good. One failed. Namespace. Yeah, this guy. So I'm going to actually delete this guy completely. Okay. Because deleting is fun and nice. <laughs> okay, there you go. And now let me run all the tests just to make sure everything is great. There's only a couple of them. Happy, happy. Yay. Great. Okay. Now. All green. All green, all green my friend. So now I, I'm going to go to users. Oops. Users is on. Uh, 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 found a, uh, brokers. Use wire mock. Okay. Now I'm going to try to save this so, you know, people like workers use fire mock so we don't have to repeat half of that stuff that we did okay so now here comes the moment of truth my friend i need to pick up an existing project that i have and then try to push a i need to try to simulate the enqueuing of a message and then i need to run the project again with actual a uh, uh, connection string to the queue that that's that's our kind of litmus test that's our okay, so try test. the actual then try the mock path right with that's the, wire, with the wire mock. okay and if that works i think we have a working solution so we we figured it out we got it to work we need to get it right and then we need to make it pretty and that pretty part is very important because i want to expand this way beyond what azure can offer and all that kind of stuff Gotcha. Okay, so what's a good project that we can steal that can actually do that? Like I have queue integrations 
all over the place. Like, you know, I, I use queues heavily. Let's go with the get file core. Let's see if we can stand up that server. So get file core basically takes your commits to GitHub or your contribution pull requests, whatever you're doing. Okay. And it basically tries to persist it in a database. So it's very straightforward, right? It goes and says, I need to queue this up and persist this up. And then based on this persistence, so let me share here my screen. Let me get a clean copy from master. Here we go. Here you go. Okay, let's go to master. This is, a, this is a massive project, massive, massive project. It has all kinds of different logic that, you know, it, it actually analyzes your code. Nice. See uh, actually... I think I've seen this where you output yeah, cool. your uh, it made a resume for you basically on your based on your GitHub contributions, but it intelligently put everything in the right places and the achievements. Yep. And the, yeah, yep. all that stuff. Yeah, I remember, I remember looking at that. That's pretty cool. Okay, so so here's the deal. I'm gonna try to um, let's let's hook it up to I don't know maybe a profile. You know, and we'll hook it up to a profile. So check this out. I have a um a queue broker in here and this queue broker listens to profiles coming in so it's listening to a profile coming in through the system okay. right so what that basically means is that once it receives a profile it goes all the way up through an orchestration service and it goes to profile events so here's what it's doing it listens to that event and then it, it calls process profile. It takes the profile event and verifies that the trusted source of this profile is registered. And then it goes and upserts this profile. Okay. Okay. So event comes through the queue, goes through, boom, done. Right. Gotcha. Let's okay. first run it as is to make sure that it's successful run. And I think I have, I think I have my connection strings in here already. Do I? I don't darn it i wanted to have my connection strings in here so i don't have to set this up Let's see here is there files that are not okay fine i'll set up a bizarro connection string okay so let's do this add a new item and do an app settings development jason yeah Gotcha. Yeah, I thought I, I swear I thought I had one, but anyway, so this is development. Dot development. Dot JSON. Great. This will be get file core database. I'm gonna make it database intentionally because I know that there is is another one running. Okay, so that's one. Great. I also want a connection string, so let me go pull. The Azure connection string because that's how this queue broker knows what to talk to. So we need service bus connection, right? Mm -hmm. So let me pull that real quick from Azure. Uh, get file core bus queue. Yeah, we have one already sitting somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So uh, here's the primary connection string. Gosh, you might want to kill your screen share on that one. <laughs> Or for the connection string, no, see, it's, it's too long, so you're missing the key. <laughs> you don't have all the pieces. Yeah, it's too long. <laughs> so what did I call it? I called it service bus connection. connection. Or something. Yeah. And also, this is like a bizarro thing. Like, I, I can shut it down anytime. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So that's my service bus connection. I think that's all I need. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. Now we just need to run this up. What a breakpoint on the profile uh, event orchestration. So I'm going to put it right here. Let me stand, stand up the system first. And then we'll do this. This is going to be super fun. Here we go. So obviously the, the system, oh, is there already five? Is there already messages in the queue? Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that makes me super happy. That means that that means it's working basically. So let's see if it goes through with it. Oh, that's that just makes my life a lot easier. Oh, it didn't like the oh because the trusted source is not registered. That's great. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them too. 
Okay, now it now it's done. Okay, cool. Let's go back and see what the the cool thing about the new Azure um, uh, service bus thing is that you can you can actually resend things that are in the dead letter queue, which okay, is sweet. Nice. Right. So let's yeah. go back here. So run through some failed messages real quick. And... Yeah, profile queue. Here is my service bus explorer. I had the service bus changed. The UI changed dramatically. Mm. It would be nice if it worked though. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, speak next message. Oh, it's just working. There you go. There it is. So okay, that's the that's the ID. Okay, let's take that one. Then I'm gonna go back to my code. I'm gonna open up my SQL Server. See, it's it's just tools. Like if you know the tools, you're good to go, my friend. Like mm -hmm. all good. What did I call it? Git file core or something. Core, core database. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And here's a table. I should find trusted sources in there. View data. Here's the ID. Test. Uh, I think it's zero one one twenty twenty two one one twenty twenty two. Let me double check so we just don't have to do a round trip. Um, trusted source ID. So if you view approved trusted source, it's like a zero trust thing. You know, mm -hmm. if if I don't know you, if you're not registered. So what's the state yeah, here? Yeah. Pending. Oh, so it's one. Okay, great. Approved. I just saved myself a minute. <laughs> great. Okay, so I have this guy now. Okay. So we know for a fact, okay, so if I go into this profile, into these profiles here and then view the data, this is empty. There's nothing here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and repost the, uh, the profile. And it should publish there once it's uh, verified, basically. Yes. Insert yes. It. Insert it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So here's the profile. Uh, I'm going to... We have a oh, by the way, Kenny, they have also a nice thing where is they basically are resend selected message. See, so I don't have to copy paste anything. Yeah, look at this broker properties. Where did they get this name from? <laughs> so, okay, so let's send this. Nice. Here we go. And then, oh, it's it's hanging at the breakpoint because I put a breakpoint there, right? So, yep, there you go. go through. F10, F10. Oh, hoo -hoo. There, it is. there it is. Are we done? Are we done? He jumps. He dunks. He scores. He async. Yeah. Okay. So now if I go back to profiles and refresh, I have a profile. There it is. There it okay. is. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. It's the first piece. Now, <laughs> here comes yeah. the fun piece. The fun piece is to go and say, I want to. Uh, let's see here. Um, I want to be able to go and say, we need to add Lake U into this. Yes, yeah, so if you add it to the solution and then reference the, like you have a te you have test running for it, right? Or you have some kind of, like you could yeah. just reference that project into, like once you pull the project in, you could just reference it. Yeah, yeah, I basically no. just want this Q broker, this Q broker that I have here, mm -hmm. it will be replaced with like you. That's all. I got you, got you. Okay. It's all that it is. So, um, okay, let's see here, my friend. So now we're going to go and add a, a reference. Add shared project reference. And I need to find whatever Lake U is. Here's Lake U. Open up File Explorer. And I'm going to pick up this guy. I'm going to find this guy here. Oh, funny. I already had it sitting there. Okay. So this is looking for a DLL directly. Fine. .NET 6, Lake U. There you go. This Lake U, great. Okay, we have Lake U in the house. Nice, nice. Okay. 
Now, what are we going to do? We need to think about how we're going to do this. So, um, this, we're going to just focus on the profiles queue. That's the one that we need to focus on. So I'm just going to go here and initialize private read only. And I make you, what did I call my client actually? <laughs> Wasn't it a, a, API? Well, I saw the API server broker. There was a. I like you client, right? Yeah, I thought so. So remember okay. we, had a, we had an API. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then this guy will be initialized. So I can go here and say. It's actually a client. Would that be a client per? Okay, so this this dot Lake U client equal new Lake U client. What does this guy take? It takes a connection string. That's right, the configurations. So I can feed it now. Literally, this guy in here. There you go. Okay. I'll steal this. You're gonna swap that out with the profile queue, right? That's uh, exactly. on line 26. Gotcha. Exactly. So this here. Just quick and dirty, but we just want to see if it works, and then we'll make it really, 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 really pretty. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Okay. Okay, so that's one piece. This is this is fantastic. This is just fantastic. Are you entertained? Because I'm. Oh sorry. yeah, no. This is this is good. I'm I'm watching the the pieces come together because I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm gonna swap out profile, <laughs> and then like so, and then yeah, once we run it and we you publish an event. If we see in the DB, that's going to be crazy. That's that's exactly what I'm going to try to do now. So so yeah. so this so this Lake U, so this is client. If I go on to if I go on to the profile, mm -hmm. now I can replace this implementation completely, right? Yeah. And I don't even need that message, which means it's going to change a few things. But that's okay. This is totally fine. What I can do here is that I can go and say this like you client dot register or subscribe event handler. Okay. Okay. And this event handler, instead of this, it's gonna be profile okay. event. And it doesn't want the cancellation token. It's looking for a value task. But now I can just pass this in here and say this is for the type profile event and that technically should do the trick right oh the event name that's right so for this guy it will be profiles okay so far so good mm -hmm. right and this guy is saying hey dude i'm smart you don't need to kind of do this you can get rid of me and i'm like okay all right pray perfect perfect this is event name okay we're getting really close to this which is fun which means that this guy is not needed anymore either i was gonna say if you want to because i'm thinking i wonder if it would break anything else like wanted to create if we want to create an overload while we're testing it or no i'll just go change the i'll go disable the unit tests okay okay and then i'm gonna go change the foundation for profile events just this tiny piece. The foundation for gotcha. profile events will be. Because I was wondering true. where that where that same method is being called later in the project to like if that's gonna because you changed the the signature, so it's gonna it might uh, throw a few things. Whereas, and if we extend it or do an overload, um, you could test that one piece of it okay. um, somewhere and keep all the contracts. But okay, well, yeah. Oh, you're you're in Git, so hey, you can always revert. <laughs> And also, mm -hmm. this guy has already a queue client under. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. What did I do here? Oh, did I not update the interface? Because I'm a dummy. Let's update the interface. Profiles. Let's see, Kenny. This yeah, is see, 17 cool. references. So, like, whenever you change that, it's going to have to change in a bunch of spots. Let's see. This should be happy now. There you go. Then, if I rebuild this, what happens to the world? Boom. Oh, wow. Nice. I'm dancing, baby. I'm going. Man. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay. So 
So now, step one, I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to stand. Okay. I'm not going to stand anything locally. I'm just passing the same mm -hmm. configuration down to this guy. Yeah, yeah. So technically, okay. if I spin this up, it should still function exactly with the service bus without a hitch. Ah, oh, what happened? You are invalid URI. So what is this? Server URL? HTTP API broker. Oh, I know why. Because the API broker is saying you have to pass something. A full path. Are you passing That's a relative? You are yeah, yeah, I, I know why it's doing that. And I remember why it's doing that. So so let's go back to Lake U. Let's do this. Okay. It's a tiny change, but we can fix it. So in this Q client, it's basically going and saying, hey, with this connection string, go ahead and initialize a whole bunch of things. But this guy has conditions. I will do this temporarily, just very temporarily. If connection string contains local host, not, it's true. And go ahead and initialize this guy. Okay. So we'll just bypass that for... It's for now. Yeah, okay. Okay. No, we're gonna need it, but for now, we don't. Just to see this initial test, we can. Yep. Yeah, gotcha. Promise you, we should never put if statements in stuff <laughs> like that. So, so okay. So this API broker, what is this guy tripping about? Let's see. Uh, use of an assigned variable. Where is this coming from? Who cares about that? Is this a new thing? Which one, oh, the, on the line 35, I think you're using that same variable. So I think it knows that it's the, the conditional. So like you might need to do a else or do, you could do equals default. I'll give it like a variable. dummy, yeah. I'll yeah, give it a dummy one. like local yeah. HTTP S local host, whatever, just for yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So if I rebuild this, I hope that this other guy will pick up. So this is this. Okay, let's go back to Mr get file and let's run this hopefully ooh what is that no. could not load file over a simply wire mock blah the system cannot oh i have to include the world that's why fine let's see what are the other dependencies that this guy needs this is a good sign by the way because that basically means that all the pieces that you need are there we just need let's see add shared project reference so lake you i thought it kind of bundles up everything together i guess not so let me do this bit even better i'll go here and say add existing project and i'm gonna go find uh lake you where is the url to that any are we over time? Uh, we got a little bit more to work this through. Yeah, you can. Okay, so I'm gonna remove. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So I'm gonna remove the assembly. Okay. And I'm gonna include the actual project instead as a reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and say include project reference, and here's like you. So now this is a shared project in here. Mm -hmm. Now if I rebuild this, it'll kind of pull all the dependencies I need. And now I'm working in the same in the same page, so nobody has nothing to say. So, so okay. <laughs> Is it running? I'm waiting. Come on, stand up. Come on, don't you know? Kenny has to go now. You're embarrassing <laughs> me. Hey, it got past the first point, so hey, that's 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 a plus. Going further. Oh, what is this? What is it? Uh, failed to bind address. address because it's already in use. Which address? Port 5000. Oh, which, like, why did it touch this guy? I shouldn't be touching this guy, though, because, um, huh. hold on a second. Uh, yeah, something was trying to. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't have reached out down here. So that means that my condition somewhere, let's see. So this is the orchestrations 
events orchestration service so i said here if it contains service bus okay what about the registration i said if connection string dot contains service bus do i need to do this also on the other level let's see so maybe i need to also include uh the uh, let's see where is it external event service event publish this api server broker right here so this guy also needs to kind of be confined uh, okay because was trying to was yeah. he construct that it yeah okay gotcha. i'll put that here but I'll go here and say, this is, this, these are, these are the tiny things. We can fix this and fix this. This is easy. Okay. Here you go. Gotcha. Let's do this again. Rebuild. We'll get there. We're, we're super close, dude. Like almost there. <laughs> Let's see, which is super fun. I, I, I don't think, like, if you're not a software engineer, there's such a jolt, like a joy when you're, like, kind of trying to break through with something, right? <laughs> once you, like, you can see the end of the tunnel. It's like, oh, man, we're so close. And then, like, once you hop over that hurdle, it's like, ah. <laughs> you make it nice. You make it all, you know, like, <laughs> let's see. Fill the bar. So what is the, so that's being kicked up again, it looks like. Oh, uh -huh. maybe in the. Oh. Is it because I didn't give it? Okay, that's right. Yeah, what's you? Yeah, this is in the my bad. Yeah, that's my bad. Nineteen eighty-five. Sure. Here you go. Nice. Be happy. Random port. <laughs> yeah, we have to give it a random port. That's right. Okay. Here we go. It's popping up like, "Hey, do you want?" You know. Well, I don't want it to stand up that server at all, but. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll just see. Now what? Let's see. Uh, at Already in use. What? Do I have something running already? Oh, uh, when you stood it up the first time, is there doing any like a destructor that can kind of close the connection once that's going? Like once you ran it the first time, did it just stay up the entire time? That might be. That's that's a good question. Uh, connection once this. Uh, yeah, I actually Post. like. I almost like don't want it. I don't want it to start at all, but I think this is a different problem. Like, yeah, because uh, so you might need to um, when you like to have the to start your API server broker um, yeah. and then have that wires wire mock server start at that point, and then until then it's just kind of sitting, just waiting to be um set up because because yeah on the constructor whenever you call that on line 26 it's going to start right. spinning up that server so it's like so so here's what i can do actually i know what the problem is i need to take these guys out completely because i think that's what this guy actually needs it needs a connection string event publish event subscription an external event so this guy here is the problem, right? This guy here is the guy that wants to do uh, certain things and it gets instantiated with that. Just out of curiosity, I'll just say 1960, 56. Just yeah, do it. Yeah, see if it will flow through. Yeah, yeah. it's going to spin up. But to that point, though, um, it's kind of like on your uh, functional test, you might need to do or your integration test, I should say, you might need to do put that in that, um, what is it, collection for the test. So that way your broker is up there and it doesn't die until, yeah. And then doesn't. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's spinning multiple instances. And yeah. I don't know how this server, like. How do you shut I, it down? <laughs> yeah, how do, how do we make it know that only spin up once? Would it, would it be possible if we just did a, like for this Q broker, if we defined it as a singleton, would that help? You know, like if I go here just for now, if I go and say, well, uh, you're you're wanting to make sure that you're just, you're still able to um, pass through and not use the wire mock yet, right? Like you're wanting to make sure. Yeah, that, yeah. So I mean, we could really uh, essentially just 
kind of disable that part of it of starting the server and just seeing does it still actually do the actual movement without without oh, I see. Uh, I see. you know what i mean so that way you don't have to worry about um okay. yep i see yeah. yep that's a great idea let's do that let's go here let me disable that part so in in the client itself we can basically just go here like instead of doing all this craziness Check this out. I'll throw both of these away, literally, in the trash. <laughs> Here, both of these are gone. Okay? And then I'm going to take these two, right, and take them in here. Okay. Okay. okay so this is iAPI broker. This is iAPI server. Okay. So this event publish and event subscribe, right, are the only ones that need to set outside. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's do that. Right. So these two, I could just add them as nulls. I shouldn't complain, right? And now I can go here and say, okay, these are the ones that you need. But now you can't actually start a server unless I want you to. Yeah. Just yeah. for now. Mm -hmm. Let's run this. Come on now. And I think, yeah, some of the explorers, like, on the wire mock is, like, when you dispose of that object, closing the connection that you made and making sure... sure and then when you're starting up, check and see if the port's already in use and then sort of yep. maybe selecting a, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can, the port's going to be random at that point, but. So, okay, so now it's running successfully. Now I'm going to put a message in the queue and see what happens. Okay, so if it hits, if it hits this guy here, then we've done the right stuff. Where is it? If it hits this guy here, then we've done it. Okay, gotcha. that's it. So and this is basically just a pass through, making sure that if it's a real connection, yep. pass through and use the real thing. Yep. So let's do that portal in Azure and go into the portal in Azure and get filed bus. Uh, I want my. Well, there's shared access policies. Uh, there is the profile queue. And then the service bus explorer. Let's see, Kenny. Almost, almost there. You got it. Yeah. You got it, brother. Almost there. So, so Beak, give me a message. There is a message. I'm going to resend the message. Moment of truth. Uh, nothing came through yet. A little concerning. Nothing came through yet. Why did it not? Um... It didn't hit anything. Why it didn't hit anything? Probably one little tiny detail. Why it didn't hit anything? You go back to the uh, initialization where you're setting up all the services. So you got the queue there. The profile. Okay. Oh, is it this? Oh, because on initialize, yeah. you're setting this guy. And then uh, get queue. Okay, event handler. Set up message options. Yeah, where is where is the place where I'm actually calling the registration? Duh. Uh. Right. But then again, also, like, isn't that what I did in the startup CS? At transient services. There. So listen to profile events is here. Listen to profile events goes and do that listening part. 
Okay. Listen, listen, all the way down. And then there's the registration piece, which if I dig into, it's pretty much. That's where subscribing. Yeah. And then you go to event handler. And then, yeah, there. It says, if it says service bus, doesn't my thing say there's service bus in there? Yeah, it does. Yep. Service yep. Bus. So, so it should register event handler. And then it'll take that and say, okay, convert that into whatever. Right, right. Right. And then it'll invoke the message. What's event Why name. am I passing event name in here, though? Let's see. What's the event name? What's the point of it? Oh, because it's it's the client. It's creating the client. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So get clear client, and then it goes and says this connection string. So if I if it reached that far in here, then it's doing the right thing. Then why would it not? This is the happy path. This is me. Don't break my existing system, kind of thing. Right. Right. Yep. Interesting. It should Pro come over here. Yeah, there it is. There it goes. Profiles. Right, and then it should. Oh, it might be erroring out because. There is no such a queue called profiles. It's called profile queue. Ah, okay, okay. Right. So if I go back into this guy, it should be profile queue. Okay. Profiles queue. Okay. So it's listening to the wrong. Um, it's listening to the wrong queue. That's it. Gotcha. That's all the problem, Ken. <laughs> Why are we making a big deal out of it? <laughs> is it profile queue or profiles queue? Profiles queue. Gotcha. Okay. Should head the endpoint. Oh, there it is. This. Okay. Okay. Here we go. F10. I hope I put the right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 He jumps. He scores. <laughs> okay. So, what does that mean? It means that in the profiles table, I should have two records or something. Did you oh, use the same it, it, oh, I use the same. I use the same. Uh, let me delete this. Let me delete this guy. And let me refresh the screen here. And then let me go back to the queue. Yeah. Yep. Resend awesome. that baby. So um, send message. I, I copied the message here because, you know, you know, and then there's the JSON and then send. It hits. There it goes. runs. And then where is my data? Refresh. Oh, it didn't do it. Why is that? I don't think we erred out. That's for one. Because here on this side, no, it actually did letter. So why did it did letter? What was missing? What am I missing? Maybe the message that I'm sending doesn't have. OK, let's see. Peak message, send message. Do we have the same trusted source ID? Oh, yeah, that's another thing, too. Yeah, do we, we see the breakpoint? Yeah, make sure. Oh, okay. So it ends that's with the ID. Yeah, this is the same one. And we have an ID, we have a bunch of details. Yeah, this the message is good. So what's the error then? Where's the error coming from? Let's see here. So send message. So we validated the event, we verified, and then we went in the upsert. And then inside the upsert, validate, retrieve. So is maybe profile already exist? No, it doesn't. So it's going to go do an add. Mm -hmm. If you go into the add, is your date time broker. Now, now, add profile hope that one doesn't throw an exception because this is the end game like the event part of this is done this is now just a storage thing yeah yeah ah uh, what is this the instance of internet cannot be tracked because another is ah uh, it's got the so, same it's still yeah. it still has that beta in mind so you have to remember you start the service i guess or something yeah i also have a, this is the is this the old style or something yeah there is um uh, the tracking, the tracking thing. Yeah. So let me restart this. I think that's what it is. So let me yeah. restart so this. Restart should do it. 
Ready start should definitely do the trick for yeah, us. Yeah, it was still under that old instance of it. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. And the message is still on the queue, which is great. Uh, or or not. Not on the queue. <laughs> so so okay, let me do this. So this is the lettered new message. Send the message. Send. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So if I go into profiles, I should see something. Yay, it's it there. Nice. Now we're gonna do the same thing, except except that this time we're gonna send it through a local event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when and that's when things are gonna be interesting. So what I'm gonna do is that let me delete this completely and then refresh this screen. And then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go into the app settings. And instead of all this, I'm gonna do this again. HTTP local host 1985. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Is that um? Because it's already, it's already. I think that server is that still already running right now? No, no, that wasn't the problem. The problem is that it's trying to stand a couple of these. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. It gonna fail. So it should it's the wire shark now. Yeah. So not, value for connection uh, string was not found. What? Hmm. Oh, I know why. Because mm -hmm. this is still trying to initialize other Q clients. These yeah, guys, okay, yeah. Those which we don't care about through 34. The, yeah. the old stuff, right? We don't care about because the library is doing its own validations too. Yeah, yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. we don't care about that. Right. In fact, actually, I'll tell you this much. Screw all of this. Let's go here and just say, dude, here's your connection string. Localhost, HTTP, localhost 1985. So this is me basically going and saying as if the connection string is coming from JSON. Because I need to get rid of all of these too. These are still integrated with Azure Q, right? So let's stand this and see what happens. Let's see. Oh, it's still going to error out because of the old configuration. So let me revert this. Let me oh, so now you're going to you're going to keep that instance, but you're going to bypass it and make sure you're not yeah. calling the real thing. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Pretty much what's coming from your configuration. Now let's just see if it works. That'd be nice. Okay. Come on, baby, you can do it. Starting doing service start failed one or more errors occurred failed to bind address address is already in use yeah that's what i was thinking like when we spun it up that one time it might still be going right now so you might have to actually go and let's try to kill number. those ports <laughs> fine that's okay zero nine eight whatever or or nine eight whatever this is a really random number so it should work yeah. <laughs> unless there's something wrong with how we start this server We'll Let me look up how to shut down the well, Firebox okay. server once it's up. It has some secret magic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. No, look. It's still freaking out. Interesting. Something else is happening. I bet it's because, yeah. I bet you, it's because this guy is uh, uh, defined as transient. So it's creating a new instance, which means it's going to try to create a new server every time. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. So a singleton might be a good solution. Let's see. For now, we need to fix it really, but let's see. Yeah, that fixed it. Nice. Okay, now we're going to pretend. So instead of posting to a... A queue, I'm going to post to a, an API URL, mm -hmm. right? And this API URL is going to be this guy. So it's going to be you still slash. Need to, you still need to register that uh, that path somewhere, though, in the code, right? What path? Because um, you need to register that once you call that endpoint, what the process is for responding to it. Because in there, like, we have a subscribe. Okay. We also need to register, though, right? Nope, it's already the same. 
It's the same process. That's the, the magic okay. of it. You just okay. change that. You just change the URL, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, it's it's functioning the same. The only oh, right, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, so with the the so the the, the Q client, right? I think yeah. uh, we somewhere in the code we are subscribing to that. Yeah. Um, but where are we actually registering that? So Wiremock knows when you call this path, send back this response. Oh, so if you look at okay, so look at the client itself. Right, the client itself. You're going and right. saying, go initialize all of these, especially if this is local host, right? Yeah. So go initialize all of these. Oh, okay. So it's basically okay. I forgot. Whenever you're calling that register that you changed the signature for earlier, that was actually doing the same register. Gotcha. Never mind. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. So if you do subscribe here, it's the same mm -hmm. subscribe. It's the same one. Right, but right, down right. the road in here, it will go and say, if it's service bus, then do the register with the external. Right, if it's not, register. then register with the local. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. And then if you go all the way down that that path, you will get to the listener. That was it. That was it before. before. Yeah. Yep. yep. Gotcha. So now let's do this. I mean, if it works, if it works. <laughs> let's go here. So what would that be? It would be the URL slash profiles q right because that, mm -hmm. that's what we're posting about and then we can go here and say here is the entire body are you ready for this yep <laughs> i'm not <laughs> <laughs> so just to confirm if i go back here onto get file and i look into my data there should be no profiles whatsoever. Right. Which is true. If I refresh, nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit the post. And then whatever happens after that, not up to us. <laughs> so <laughs> so just to, to make sure, this is... I'm going to put a break point at the... Yeah, I want to put a break point somewhere see if we hit the... Uh, let's see. What would you put? You probably want to put it in the... Respond. Oh, the callback is actually already registered once we spun up. Mm -hmm. So interesting. So it might actually hit that callback though. I'm, gonna, when, I'm wondering where to put a breakpoint to see if we ex, uh, accepted the message. Basically. Oh, that. Oh, that would be this guy. So the profile event. That's this guy here. Oh yeah. yeah okay. So we're already. Yeah. So I, I was thinking about on the, on the lake queue side, but I think we're we should be good. I also forgot something. We need to make sure. Remember, that's the same thing that happened to us last time. We need to make sure that I need to shut this off for a second. Uh, the do you remember last time we got burned by the same thing? We basically went and said, "Oh, take that event name," but it's actually more like you have to actually do this. Remember? Oh, that's right. The 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 path we needed that rooted path last time. Yeah, yep. yeah. Good call. I forgot about that. Man, we just get burned by them enough, and then. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna post that same message. Post. <laughs> nice. What? Wait. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Here we go. He jumps. He dunks. And then if I go to the the profiles and refresh, yeah. boom, done. Wow. Nice. So it's it's acting exactly nice as if it's receiving a message from the service bus. How crazy is that? <laughs> yeah, man. Locally. So local postman, you can run and pretend your whole service queue spun up. You don't log into Azure or anything. You're just, man. <laughs> yeah, the level of stuff you can do for acceptance tests now. Like, man, that's now we can go to our acceptance tests and go and say, here's like you. Here's what it's doing for you, right? And here's how we're gonna. Mm -hmm. Man, that's it's good stuff. Now, um, I know you're at time, so the one thing I just wanted to kind of, literally, what you and I just did is this. That's exactly what we did. We basically went and said, try through the queue or try through the API. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. We have something that kind of works. It needs just a tiny bit of cleanup. Right. But yeah. but here's the other thing that's more important than both of these. 
is that that in order for us to actually have a nice library that works, and this is going to be maybe next time, uh, Kenny, we need to have a, a Levent core, and Levent core will always stand up a server for you because it's a good friend, right? Mm -hmm. However, this is your local servers. This is local API. However, we want to allow external DLLs that go and say Levent dot Azure, Levent dot wrappers, okay, AWS, and Levent dot GC, Google Cloud. What that basically means is that it doesn't matter as long as you're passing a provider. Levent will go and say, hey, wait a second. Is this a local host that you want to test locally just to see if your system eventing is running? Mm -hmm. Dude, this is huge. This unlocks a big portion of, you know, properly testing events that are locally running on the queue, on the queue. And then yeah, many, yeah. many, many events to come after. Yeah, so then later you can, again, like you mentioned, bind to different providers so that it's like a wrapper around it where you don't have to be specifically in Azure. Right now we're tightly coupled to that infrastructure. So nice, nice, yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah, that's... <laughs> so that's a lot in one session right there, man. That's a lot. I, I want to... Uh, is your heart stop at nine or is it already gone? um yeah i could, probably gotta run here in the next five but yeah yeah it you know it would be nice if we did okay just just for five minutes if okay. it would be nice if we went and said let's see here kenny so it would be super nice if we basically went and said like see the whole thing has changed now the mm -hmm. way we do a profiles look how simple the implementation is now yeah listen to profiles we did it man we did it that's it you change the configurations you're listening to azure change the configuration to local host now you're listening to a local api endpoint i'm going to try to incorporate this in uh, some of the project i'm going to incorporate in dmx which is the project that i do at work devices okay. management experience for hololens and see like there's nothing like using something in real life you know, in the real world, you know, and just yep, incorporate yeah. that. This covers up a problem that we had in acceptance this for a while. My dear friend, nice. thank you so much. I appreciate you awesome. for hanging out with me. You know, yeah, and, awesome uh, session, man. Yeah, this is game changer. This game is changer. this is it really is. It really is. I need to I need to publish Lake U and just see I'll just keep it there and then continue okay. the development and Levant, you know, to kind mm -hmm. of be be able to kind of be more modular and all that. Gotcha. Stop, you right? Push up NuGet package and then pull it into a couple projects, do some testing, and nice, nice. It's gonna be great, right? Yeah, Luckily, yeah, both yeah. of these libraries, both Azure and uh, WireMock, are MIT, so the yeah. right to redistribute and all that is all mm -hmm. great. It's all going absolutely. Well, Plus you're publishing it open source anyway, so it's you know <laughs> it's all out there. I'm not yeah. really doing anything. You know, I love open source. Love, love open source. Almost too much. <laughs> A little too much, you know what I mean? Anyway, I you know, you. thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. Anything, yeah, from you, anything from your side? Any last remarks with your side? Oh, no, no. Looking forward to, to keeping this thing going, man. Um, yeah, reach out. Let me know when you, when you publish it, and yeah, we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, the next session, we'll talk about this modularization. Awesome. Like how you can publish multiple NuGet packages that target different providers. Yeah and allow people to kind of implement their own because your interface is out there. So you just go and publish whatever. Yeah, It's great. And of That's course, nice. you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the session, you know, reach out. This is a little bit more advanced engineering. This is a little bit advanced. Kenny. That's a little bit on the, <laughs> <A> little <laughs> not, <bit. laughs> not, not, not even bleeding edge. That's we jumped, <laughs> we jumped off that cliff. <laughs> yeah. There's no edge anymore. We already yeah. jumped off the, yeah, we're all the way out there right now. That's <laughs> new territory, new territory. <laughs> so, yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, of course, drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in another session. Thank you so much, Kenny. Take care.